Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Tuesday, so guess what? It's another episode of Choose You. And I am Tasha Haskins, Mrs. Curvey Globe 2020, as well as the author of Choose You, Change Your Path, and Walk in Your Purpose. I see Coach Mosley is already on. This is awesome. We're going to have an amazing show today. But in honor of it being May 4th, I just wanted to, for those of you guys who understand what that means, I'm just going to do this for you. Yes. May the 4th be with you. <laughs> yes. It is May the 4th, you guys. It's necessary for me to do this. May the 4th be with you. All right. Enough of the Star Wars soundtrack. <laughs> okay, again, if you are guys who are just tuning in, um, today, this is, I am Tasha Haskins. I say Tasha on Tuesdays, Mrs. Curvey Globe 2020, and the author of Choose You, Change Your Path, and Walk in Your Purpose. Um, you are watching Choose You. This is a Mrs. Globe-powered IG TV show that airs every Tuesday at 9 a.m. right here on the Mrs. Globe channel. This is the show that is meant to inspire you to your life's crescendo, showing you how to choose you each and every day and every step of the way. I'm incredibly excited about today's guest. Um, of course, he is in the basketball industry. You guys know I am a former Hooper myself, so I'm very excited. But what really intrigued me is that through COVID, um, not only he is a very well-known basketball coach and trainer, and he has just really done some really big things in the basketball industry, but he has started working with his clients on what he calls the inner game. And you guys already know that Choose You is all about our inner selves and getting that to a place where we can actually live and walk in our purpose. So I'm getting ready to go ahead and bring Coach Mosley on. Oh, before I do that, a couple of announcements. So as you guys know, this show is powered by Mrs. Globe. And in just six weeks, women from all around the world and all across the United States are going to be joining together in Palm Springs for the 25th anniversary and annual event for Mrs. Globe. I am ex super excited. Like, okay, I have mixed feelings because then I have to give up my title and crown the next person. And that means I'm no longer going to be Mrs. Globe, Mrs. Curvey Globe. But it's going to be an amazing, powerful event. Um, there's still actually time for you to enter. So if you think you can get your game together um, by June 19th, then I would say enter. If not, please go to mrsglobe.com to get your tickets. Of course, I believe it'll also be streaming live as well if you are not able to make it to Palm Springs. So we're very, very excited about that. I know I'm excited, kind of. Um, <laughs> for this to happen. All right. Hi, Rachel. Hey, look at that. I love it. The beautiful Mrs. Venezuela is on watching as well. Okay. So coach, I am going to go ahead and get you online here. For those of you guys who just joined, you missed my whole like, you know, tribute to Star Wars. I totally had the music playing and everything. So yes, I am a sci-fi nerd. We can all get over it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get you on here, Arvid. I'm very excited. I think you should be coming on here shortly. No technical difficulties today. <laughs> oh, I, I, I see it. There he is. Hello there, coach. Oh, hello, yes. Hello. Yoda. I love it. I yeah. love it. Yeah, yes, made a fortune with you, Coach. <laughs> I got a little little Lego nerd in me there, right? So yes, made a no. with you. Nerds are awesome. Like I'm an undercover nerd. People don't even know that I love sci-fi. <laughs> I like chess. Like I'm so people would have no idea. Um, but yeah. yes, I am. I see you're repping the Sonics back there. Maybe Always. you can use the force to bring them back <laughs> to <laughs> Seattle. That would be awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and just jump into this. I know you have such good stuff to share with us today. And again, it's just an honor to have you on the show, taking time from your very extensive schedule of just coaching and changing lives um, all across the Northwest. So I really appreciate you doing that. Um, now, I, you know, in, I have my questions for you, so I'm going to go ahead and start there. Now, in the context of being a very competitive basketball coach and personal trainer, you know, I, I, I see that you are kind of like you've gotten to that crescendo in your career, but I would love to hear more about your story and your journey there. I think a lot of people, you know, they see the glory and triple impact coaching and yeah, right. but they don't right. know the story, right? They don't know right. how you got there. So I'd love for you to share a little bit of your story or your testimony today. Uh, you know, I was born to teach. I, I didn't know that, but uh, the good Lord put me here to teach that um, I have been doing basketball camps. I coached my first game and my first basketball camp when I was 14 years old. 
And wow. um, I, I, my dream as a child, when I was in fifth grade, I told my dad I was going to be a running back in the NFL or, <laughs> or my, ba my backup plan was to just be a high school PE teacher and just a basketball coach. Like that was my, I thought that was the coolest thing that you could possibly be a high school PE teacher and a basketball coach. <laughs> and so um, I've been, I've been unknowingly chasing this dream since I was about 13, 14 years old. Wow. And um, ultimately, I got into college coaching. Um, you know, I, I've got a couple stories about how I got into college coaching as opposed to getting my degree in teaching like I wanted. Uh, ran into some gatekeepers you know, throughout our life. You know, Tasha, we run into those gatekeepers and someone who tells you no, but what, she, what inadvertently does is opens a door for you to go somewhere else, right? Well, let's, wait, and, let's talk about those gatekeeper, gatekeeper experiences because I think yeah. people would really benefit from that and how you were able yeah. to navigate around that to be able to do what you're doing. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit. Yeah, so uh, it was my junior year of college. Um, I had played a season at Whitman College in Walla Walla, Washington. The city's so nice, they named it twice. And I... Um, <laughs> decided to transfer to Ellensburg to go play at Central Washington for Coach Spar and the staff over there. And um, before school started, as I'm going to go register, I walked into the teaching education program, right? You know, Central Washington is, is famous for its teaching. Um, you know, I've got friends that teach all over at every level. And so I walked in. Well, my GPA at Whitman uh, was a 3.2, I want to say, at Whitman. And to get into the Central Washington teaching program, I needed a 3.3 or it was a 3.35, but there was some, some part of the GPA where I was a little low. And so mm -hmm. I walked in and the person at the front counter says, well, your GPA is too low. Now, instead of on her end, instead of her saying, here's some things you can do. And on my end, instead of saying, what can I do? I did what young brothers do sometimes. And I get frustrated and I got mad. And I, and I, and I said, I have a 3.2 at Whitman. A 3.2 at Whitman is the same as a 3.3 at Central, if not higher, right? And, right. and but, but I got argumentative, I got frustrated, and I stormed mm -hmm. out. So someone who had spent their whole life wanting to be a teacher ran to that first gatekeeper that said, hey, you, you're not, your GPA is not high enough. You're not worthy. Mm -hmm. You're not qualified. You don't deserve it, right? And, and, and you get those feelings right away. So here I am. At And oh, we can't hear you. Oh, there we go. Teacher, right? And I, oh, okay. Um, and I, and I don't want No, to you're, you're fine. If notifications come in that cuts off, that's why I put mine on do not yep. disturb. Um, <laughs> and, and so, uh, um, and not to minimize people, when I say just be a teacher, I don't mean it like that. I mean, that was the ceiling for me. I just wanted to be a teacher. That, that's, and uh, so anyway, so this lady tells me, no, I storm out, I get frustrated. I walk around campus, but what can I do? I've got all these credits from Whitman College and an associate's degree. What do I do? Um, I ran into a lady that, that said, well, you could do English. You know, we could take all those credits at Whitman and you could put them towards uh, English credits and you could get yourself an English degree. And so I said, cool. And I took three English classes for four consecutive quarters, three English classes. Shakespeare, literature, African American literature, uh, women's literature. I love um, English stuff. So. <laughs> um, and so it, I, I ended up with a degree in English. So that 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 was kind of how uh, I went from wanting to be a teacher to simply getting a bachelor's degree in English language and literature from Central Washington University. That is awesome. I I I mean I appreciate you sharing that story because again, like you said, many of us will have those moments, right, where we're like, what, really? You know, I had this plan. I had a plan. You know, I can honestly tell you, Coach, the plan that I had 100% did not happen. Um, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. did not play out the way I wrote down on my little piece of paper when I was like 15, mm -hmm. 13 years old, you know. Right, um, right. And that's usually the way that God works, you know, because he wants to make sure he gets all the glory, right? He wants to make sure, like, we understand, like, no, I'm the one who put you in this position. So, yeah, so, you know. Um, now, this is a good, you know, segue um, kind of into my next question. Now, actually, um, on my book, in the back of my book, I use this analogy where I talk about how, you know, when we're, let's say, we're, we're, we're hooping or whatever and we get an injury okay and those parents you know especially if they think their kid has potential to go to the next level the first thing they do is take them to the doctor they want an x-ray they're gonna go through physical therapy they're gonna do whatever coach tells them to do so they can get their butt back on the court and get mm -hmm. back to their dream right but mm -hmm. then when it comes to the, the injuries of the heart for some reason it's weird to go to the doctor and get a diagnosis and go through therapy and get things mm -hmm. okay like you know hey you know who cares about my heart or who cares about my mind you know mm -hmm. and so for me i said what we need to start applying those same 
things to the matters of the heart and the mind. And so that is something, um, a very, an athletic uh, analogy that I use in just my mindset around these type of things. So during COVID, you mentioned that you have started talking about what we call, I love that, the inner game. You probably mm -hmm. should trademark that because I really like it. <laughs> just saying. Um, <laughs> that's okay. I already wrote my book. I won't put it in there. But anyway, you know, the inner game. And so I would like for you to kind of first talk about what made you start trying to, you know, not shift to focusing on the inside, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think about, you know, when I had my little comeback three years ago at Pierce College, and mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I would have had the mindset I had now with the body I had when I was 19. And right, I would have right. been, I, mean, I was a beast, but I would have been like more of a beast, right? Because right, right. no one could get in my head. I'm like, I'm grown. Like, I, I, I you, you could be my right. kid. Stop talking, messing me on the court. I don't got time for that. Right, you know, like, right. I wish I would have had that mindset. So digressing back, if you could share with me why you wanted to kind of shift that focus and then yeah. also how that's impacted even your players and maybe even their ability to play and function in everyday life. Mm -hmm. Well, the term inner game, I, I got it from one of my mentors, Colin Henderson, Master Your Mindset. Um, shout out to Colin. And, um, but as, we, as I started to dig into the literature behind mindset, one of the first books that was written was called Winning the Inner Game of Golf. Um, and so if you get a chance, it, it might be one of the driest, most boring uh, um, technical books I've ever read, but it was such a good book. Um, but so... I don't know how that works, but okay. Yeah, well, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, it's just dry, you know, it's, it's real clinical. It's a real clinical book. But the, the, when you pull the strategies out, though, they're helpful. And this book is written in, it was written in the early 70s and still valuable today. Um, what happened was this. I had two young ladies that I trained. They were freshmen in high school. Both of them were very, very good players. Both of them were all league players as freshmen in high school. But both of them struggled when we would train or we would work out. They'd miss two shots in a row and, oh, my God, or they'd shoot. And as they're shooting, oh, that's off. In the middle of their shot now, Tasha, right? You know I mean, and, and, and we, we, we think I'm guilty that, of that. Right? And, and we do that sometimes <laughs> to ourselves. And so my thoughts to, with them were, this has nothing to do with basketball. It, you are skilled enough to play varsity as a 14 year old young lady. You are skilled enough to be having colleges call you. Um, but they were struggling with the inner game. They were struggling with their mindset and their approach to adversity, their approach to challenge. And so I, I tried to figure out what can I do to help these young ladies? And so I was having a conversation with um, uh, my good friend, Colin, and uh, with the gentleman who I work for now, uh, the Lineker team, Corey Lineker and the Lineker team, and the three of us were just talking and having a conversation on, you know, Zoom, and we were Zooming it up like everybody. And, <laughs> um, and Colin mentioned that he had a mental toughness program. He had a, 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 you could earn a certificate in mental toughness. And I had heard him on a podcast talking to somebody about a mental performance certificate. And I said, these, these sound like what I need. And so I dug in, I got two certificates, um, and studied my tail off probably for like a month of just nothing but mindset, mental toughness, winning mm. the inner game. I, I just Googled and Googled and Googled. And, um, you know, I think when you're, when you're educated, you know, sometimes I think you can sometimes just go teach yourself what you want to know. I think sometimes we're yeah. so worried about a formal education that, well, I don't have a degree in psychology or I don't have a degree in, in mental therapy. Hey man, I, you're studied, preaching. I, studied. I love it. Yeah. Yep. And so, um, I, I read books, I got certificates, you know, I've got, I've got, you know, book after book after book, just around mindset and how to win the inner game and, and um, how to help athletes tap into the, the potential that they have within them. And I think yeah. all of us, honestly, and, and it's transitioned to now to where, you know, I'm working with not just athletes. Um, but yeah, I mean, we all have that, that um, we all have, we talk about the two wolves inside of us, we have the, the critic wolf, and we have the champion wolf. I call it the champion wolf. And the critic wolf is the wolf inside of us that always tells us, ah, you can't do that. Ah, don't try. Uh, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. You're not handsome enough. You're not skinny enough. All these things yeah. this critic wolf tells us. And the critic wolf also tells us, hey, they're talking about you. You should listen to what they're saying. Listen to that. And then you have the champion wolf. And the champion wolf is what I say is when you start to take control of the dialogue, the champion yeah. wolf the champion wolf is when you control the conversation and then you tell yourself, I am beautiful. I am smart. I am gifted. I am I enough. It. I am brilliant. You know, mm. um, th you know, those are the affirmations that I say to myself, I am enough. I heard that. And that really, that was one of the affirmations that I heard that 
probably one of the most powerful affirmations I've ever yeah. heard and, and is I am enough. And I, I think wow. what happens is, again, with those two wolves, the critic wolf, we listen to other people's voices. We listen to the outside voices when you're with the critic wolf, the critical wolf. But the champion wolf is when you take control of the dialogue and you start talking to yourself. I love that. Yep. I love that. I mean, I think, um, and it's so good to hear, I'm just going to say, to hear a man make these statements because that's a good you know, segue into my next question, just about the taboos around the challenges that are in our head. For some reason, we think that if you have a, you're having challenges mentally or emotionally, that it, you know, it means that you're walking backwards in a straitjacket. No, like of, oftentimes people in leadership and, and people that are very functional are really struggling mentally and emotionally. I mean, we always get shocked when we see certain celebrities, oh my God, they, they ended their own life. Why? They were rich, they were this. Because they're going crazy like in their own mind and they don't, and they're, and they're listening and giving in to that, to that, that wolf, the, the non-champion wolf, you know? Yeah, they're giving yeah. in to that, that wolf, right? Versus um, trying, you know, versus tapping into the champion wolf. Now, mm -hmm. I wanted, this isn't a question I pre-told you, but I wanted to know yeah. like, what are some, a couple of practical things that you do to be able to, I guess, shift to the champion wolf? Because that's not easy to do. It's very mm -hmm. easy, especially if your, your own inner voice is saying it, then you got people on the outside confirming what the inner voice is saying, and champion wolf feels like they're so small, but they're really not. So what are some mm -hmm. practical things that you do to shove out the other one mm -hmm. and, and, and tap into champion mm -hmm. wolf? Um, well, I have a morning routine, right? I'm a big believer that you control your morning to you control your life, right? And so um, I wake up in the morning, my, my sons are eight and 11. Um, and I think I saw my daughter on here. Hey, sweetie. Um, <laughs> my, uh, my sons are eight and 11. And we spent five minutes this morning on our mindset. And so every morning, okay. we do uh, what I call it's called a four minute mindset. I got it from Colin. Um, and basically, we sit for one minute, and we just breathe. Right. And some people call it meditation, but some people are scared of meditation. So cool. Then don't meditate. Just breathe. Check in with your body <laughs> a little breathe. bit. Right. Just sit and breathe and check in with your body. What, what's what are you feeling a little bit? Kind of a, like a body scan. Right. You sit. You just feel what you feel. Hear what you hear. Think what you think. Mm -hmm. And then as they come, what I've gotten better at as I've gotten better at meditation is learning how to let the thoughts come and go. Thoughts are like bubbles. Think about these thought bubbles, right? You have a thought, it's a bubble. And sometimes those bubbles start small and they get really, really big. And then you focus on this bubble. M you know, my boss doesn't like me. I'm, I'm having trouble with my spouse. And you focus on these bubbles and they get bigger and bigger. But when you're meditating, as these bubbles start to come, you just let them go. They come, cool, it's a, it's a, it's a problem. Cool, gotta let it go for just for right now. We're letting it go. Oh, hey, I'm mm. awesome. Everybody loves me. Cool, let that bubble go until you get to that point to where you're just really thinking about your breathing. So we do a minute of breathing. We just sit and breathe. We just, we just we sit in a circle. I, I stare out the window. They stare at me. I think I, I keep my eyes open. <laughs> um, Dad, is it a minute yet? <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And so we breathe for a minute. Um, and then um, I have, we, the method is called HA. I have, I am, and I will. H-A-W. Mm -hmm. So for one minute, I write down all the things that I have. I have a large family wow. that loves me. I have a beautiful daughter. I have two beautiful, smart sons. I have a, a healthy granddaughter. I have a cool son-in-law. Like I write these things down or I, I have some things pre-written that I'll read. So I alternate between writing and I alternate between reading. Wow. And so I, I say all the things I have. I have a house. I have a car. I have money in my bank, right? The things that we sometimes wow. take for granted. And it doesn't mean I'm bragging. Like I don't say I have the best car in the world. I have a car. And so we, I start the day with I have, so I can remind myself about the things I have. The A stands for I am. So then I spend a minute, me and the boys spend a minute with I am. I am smart, I'm talented, I'm unique, I am enough, I'm brilliant, I am loved and respected, um, I'm valued. So then we do a minute of I am. And then the last minute we set our intention for the day, I will. I will smile. Mm. I will hug my kids. <laughs> I will check in. Right? I will. I will. So what I said to myself today, Tasha, before I came to you guys is, is I will bring the juice. It's like I will bring the juice today and I will bring my A game and, and we'll talk maybe get into the A game. And later. You're 100 percent doing that. <laughs> and so I, I, I told myself I will bring the juice. I've got 30 minutes or an hour, however long Tasha blesses me with the mic and whatever the <laughs> audience is. And I will bring the juice that that's. And so every morning wow. I spend no less than four minutes um, on my breathing. I have, I am, and I will. So wow. that's, that's just four minutes a day to kind of, 
I talk about putting my armor on before I walk out, right? Put my armor on, my, my mental and emotional armor on. Now, that doesn't mean that I ignore problems. It just means that I choose not to spend all my energy on those problems at that moment. And um, I like to think that before I leave the house or before I leave my bedroom, I've steeled myself for the day, right? I've really... Wow. Myself, so when someone cuts me off in traffic or someone does something rude or disrespectful, I don't immediately put it... I don't immediately go, well, he doesn't like me. You got nothing to do with me and nothing to do with me. Yeah, at all. yeah. Um, and so that has been kind of one of the biggest shifts for me personally is, is mastering my mornings. Wow. Okay, so I'm, one, I'm definitely going to be asking you to send that to me. Um, and, of course, later on I'm going to have, a, you know, pe you give people a way they can follow you and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. that is very, very, very powerful. Like, I mean, mastering your morning, um, all of those affirmations on being intentional about it. Um, that is just powerful that you do it with your children. I mean, wow, like you are just setting a stage. And, and I think that is just amazing. And I really hope that everyone, those who, you know, right now we kind of show during work hours. So people mostly watch after the fact. Um, mm -hmm. And I just hope everyone that is watching like, takes that in, pause and write it down. Like I'm very, can I, thank you so much. Yes, please. Let me, add, can I, let me add to that. And so what I, and a lot of people say, well, how to get your children to do it or, they don't like it. So what I did, I started with my door open and I just did it. And I left my door open and the boys interrupted me once or twice, right? In the middle of my meditation, they walked in like, what are you doing, dad? And, da -da -da. and I said, oh, I said, hey, fellas, I'm meditating right now. When you hear the music, you know, maybe d wait till the music stops before you, you know, talk to me. Oh, okay, dad. And so I did that for a couple of weeks. They just, I left my door open. And then eventually I said, hey, come on in and join me, fellas. And so I kind of like, you know, slowly introduced it to them so that I wasn't forcing it to them. I set the example. I did it first. They saw me do it. And then it wasn't so foreign and it wasn't so weird to them. And so I think sometimes as parents, as coaches, as leaders, hey, you yeah. need to do this and you need to do that. Nah, man, let me go ahead and set the mm -hmm. up. So, uh, so I just want to share that because I don't want people to think that like I did anything special or I'm not, I'm not some gifted you know, father. No, I just, I just set the example though. I really just did for a couple of weeks and, and then they joined me. Well, I would actually contradict what you said. You, you are a special father because you are setting aside or teaching your kids how to choose themselves every single morning by setting aside that time. And oftentimes as parents, we're rush, 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 get the kids to school, got to go to work, got to do this and that. And we're not actually setting a foundation for their day. You know, mm -hmm. and that is mm -hmm. so, so powerful. Actually, one of my predecessor, um, she's from Canada. She was Mrs. Curve Globe 2019. And she always talks about leading with your feet. And that sounds like kind of what you're talking about, about leading with your feet. And I think that is just so powerful. Now, there's a couple, one more thing I want to really touch on with you um, is it is, again, it, it's a taboo subject, you know, mental health. Um, especially not just in the athletic industry, but also amongst black people and definitely amongst black men. Um, and so, you know, the concept of being weak or, you know, one of, you know, I can't let people know and I gotta be this and that. And, you know, you as a black man and especially in the athletic industry, hi, Alicia, I just quoted you about leading with your feet, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, um, but you being in that demographic as an athlete, as a coach, as a leader, as a father and as a black male, you know, what are your thoughts around it? What could you say to men in that demographic and even outside of it that like, it's okay to not be okay and to, and to work on your inner game? What would you say about yeah. that? You know, for me personally, um, I'll be totally transparent. I probably could use some therapy like other people, right? Like I've, I've never, um, I've been to one therapy session in my life. I probably could use some, so to speak. Um, so I, I want to be totally transparent that I'm not, yeah. um, but I have kind of found ways to self um, you know, self to serve myself, right? The best way I can. So I have two weekly um, um, Zoom calls with two of my good friends. Like we have standing, it's on our calendar. That's and, awesome. And so I have two friends that if somebody says, hey, are you available at this time? Nope, I'm busy. Doesn't matter how much yeah. money they offer me. It doesn't matter what their issue is. I do these check-ins every week. I have two friends that we do weekly check-ins. Um, I also have a few other uh, uh, friends that we just, we don't necessarily have a, a set schedule of weekly check-ins, but we're constantly checking on each other, constantly celebrating each other's birthdays. We have group FaceTime, we've had group Zooms, um, whatever we can do that away. 
Um, and as we've kind of opened up a little bit, we go have a couple beers and barbecue some food, right? I went the other night. Right, and, right, right. And right. so we did. We, we barbecued some food and had a couple beers and just laughed at each other and, and hugged. And, and, and um, I think yeah, I, I, I think one thing that I probably miss the most is playing basketball and touching other people. Like mm. the physical, like I always liked to elbow people you know you and i kind of played a lot. i mean i watched you play a little bit right yeah 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 i'm a little like to, you like to set a screen on somebody and maybe bump somebody a little bit like let them know have them run into a wall there. right right um i miss that side of it and it doesn't matter how many hugs i get from my kids or whether you have an intimate time with somebody of the opposite sex whatever the case may be ultimately i really miss being in a gym elbowing somebody touching somebody <laughs> right like and so, like, for me, I've had to find ways to, like, you know, to, to like, fill that bucket of mine, right? And and a lot of holding my kids' hands, a lot of cuddling, you know? Like, yeah. I went I went with my daughter yesterday to the Children's Museum, and I must have hugged her 20 times. And my <laughs> granddaughter, and I'm trying to hold her hand. He wanted to hold my hand. And so I know what I need physically that yeah, way. And so yeah. I try to get as much of that um, as I can. Um, but ultimately, I think we have to create a network of people around us that mm. lift us, um, that encourage us, that cheer for us. And um, I've got a group of, of, of men, black men, white men, but I've got a group of men that just, they cheer for me, man. They cheer for me. That's they awesome. Just, they're just, um, you know, you, you kind of create your own cheering section as we get older. Um, yeah. And, and, I, and I've done that. And I try to be cheerleaders too. Like I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sending somebody- You're a very cheery guy. Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank You're a very you. cheery, encouraging guy. I mean, I, I think what I keep hearing is theme when you talked about the four minutes in the morning and setting the foundation, you know, for your day and then having these, you know, weekly check-ins, it's about setting aside time for you. And I'm very, and I think that's, again, for some reason, we feel obligated to meet everyone else's needs and all oh, this person needs to be here and that person's there. And we're just literally, we're running on E, we're on fumes. And you're saying, look, I set aside a whopping four minutes a day and maybe an hour and a half once a week with my guys or twice a week or whatever, so that I can make sure that Arvin can do and be everything that God's taught, called him to do and be. And so like for me, I'm very similar. I go to this, um, there's a course called Reclaiming Me through the Women in Need Foundation. It's virtual and it's, it's very good, just teachings and self-love planks and everything. And that's my hour and a half every Thursday. I've been doing it for almost a year and everyone knows, do not call me, don't talk to me, don't ask me to do right. that thing. I'm not, right, that, this is right. my time that I set aside for Tasha. You know, I, I was in intense, very intense therapy, you know, um, a couple years back, just really trying to grind through and fix everything. So now I'm kind of like what I call the toning to my, my healing. You know, first you drop mm -hmm. all the weight then you want to get in the gym and tone. So I'm kind of in the wow. toning season and no one can tell me. I said, nobody is going to take me away from where I am now, right? I'm never going to let anyone get in the way of me being spiritually, emotionally well. And um, I took a while for me to get to that place, but now I am. And I'm like, I ain't going back to crazy, mm -hmm. okay? I'm not doing mm -hmm. it, you know? Mm -hmm. And so if that means I set aside, hey, Tosh, what are you doing? I'm going to my reclaiming me. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you're bad. So don't, you know, mm -hmm. I literally put my phone on do not disturb. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what I do for Tasha. Um, and then once yeah. a month, I meet with my therapist still just to kind of make sure that the things that were worked through and in place are, are there, you know? And sometimes things come up and it's like, oh, I haven't worked through that, you know? <laughs> so I got to yeah. fig yeah. figure that out. So yeah. I just applaud you. Now, what I want, the last thing I want to ask you is that, you know, I, and is that someone watching today or someone that's going to be watching later on, they're standing at a crossroads of whether they're going to continue the path of pain or because it's familiar and it's what they know or walking in the path of choosing themselves, you know, taking that first step to whether it's healing, to setting aside time, to whatever it may be, what would you say to a person to encourage them on that path to choosing them while they're standing at that crossroads? If you're not full, you can't fill anybody else up. If you're not um, living the life that you wanna live, it's gonna be hard for you to help others. And I think we're all here to help others. I, I don't care what kind of job you have. I don't care what kind of role you're in. Um, you know, I ask my kids, like, who are you here to help? And my son says, I want to play in the NFL. Okay, cool. But who are you here to help? Right? And I think we have to all constantly recognize who are we here? We're here to help others. And so we have to take care of ourselves. Um, um, <clears throat> the other piece about that choosing you is what happens sometimes is we try to do too much. And I think we don't recognize that a little bit adds up over time. And that's why I have no problem like with four minutes. Some people act like, well, it's just four minutes. Yep. 
It yeah. is just four minutes, which makes it even easier for me to commit to it every single day. Now, if I say, oh, I want to lose weight or lose weight and I'm going to change my diet, I'm going to go to the gym four days a week, I'm going to eat this, I'm going to eat that, all of a sudden we become overwhelmed with these options and these choices that we've made for ourselves. So I would say if you're at a crossroad, I would say start small. I would say find something that you – you can only control what you can control. I, I got, I, I, Tasha, I got acronyms for days. I'm gonna, give you, I'm gonna give you one of my acronyms. I didn't give you a game yet. Maybe we'll circle back, but I'm gonna give you this. You only can control the earth. The universe is big, but you can only control the earth. You can control your effort, your attitude, your response, your thoughts, and your habits. Wow. Let me say that again. Your effort, your attitude, mm -hmm. your response, your thoughts, and your habits. When we start to understand what we control, we don't worry about somebody cutting us off in traffic. We don't worry as much about our boss wow. who doesn't approve of us mm. or, or somebody at the, at, that we may be trying to court somebody and they don't approve of us. We don't worry as much about that because we can't control it. Wow. So when, you're at that, when you're at that crossroad, control what you can control. Start small, right? Let's do wow. a little... Let's do a little. You're preaching to me today. I'm yeah. like, this is supposed to be for other people, but I'm like taking it all away. Like, oh my God, I need notes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you'll go back and watch the replay, right? Uh, I am, and I'm going to be in the inbox. Like, I need you to write that down. I need the four things. I need the earth. Yeah. I need, you know, yeah. a whole new life right now, okay? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. hey, no problem. I, I'm, hey, I'm here for it. Um, but I would say if you're at that crossroads, I would just say be intentional and start small because if you can start small, but you can keep it consistent, it'll grow. Whereas mm. if you try to start big, you try to you try to change too much at once. It might work for a week or two or three, and then it starts to overwhelm you. And then it becomes more of a burden, you know, you know, use it, let's That's use weight good. loss for an example, right? Weight loss. It becomes more of a burden to go to the gym, to go grocery shopping because you've loaded up too much. Wow. Mm. Go for a walk, go walk for five minutes. And if that, and then, and then, you know, build on that. Um, and so um, I'm a big believer on starting small, but starting consistent. I really just think consistency. You know, yeah. 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 Do a little, a lot, do a little, a lot. Ooh, a lot, I lo little. You are just full of nuggets. I'm going to have to do a part two with you. This um, <laughs> show's 30 minutes. So I, I'm going to okay. do a part two with you, but yeah. I want, there's a couple of nuggets I would like for you to articulate correctly. So I don't mess it up. The yeah. first yeah. one um, is going to be the, the four minutes. Okay. So I would like for you to, what is the, what yep. did you call yep. that when you start your morning with? Yep. Yep. So it's called a four minute mindset. Shout out to Colin Henderson, master your mindset. Look him up on IG. It's my guy. Um, so it's a four minute mindset, one minute of breathing, one minute. I have Talk about the things that you have one minute. I am affirmation statements. And then yes. one minute I will, what will you do? So good. And now, you said when you master your morning, you master your life. Um, your life. I think, I yeah, I think in the, mor the morning you, um, I saw some research that says your self-control and intention is at its peak first thing in the morning. And what happens is we wake up in the morning, Tasha, and we say, oh, I feel tired. When in reality, if you would wake up, do your morning routine, whatever it is, then your feelings will start to shift and then thoughts become mm -hmm. things. You've heard, you've heard that before, you know, our good friend, John Gaines and, and, and talking yeah, about yeah. thoughts, be, thoughts become things. And so when I wake up in the morning, instead of saying, I feel tired, right. I mm. don't do that. I tell myself I am great. I'm a champion. I'm a winner. And so wow. then my feelings become those things. Right. And so, um, but too often we wake up in the morning. Oh man, I'm tired. Or, Oh, I don't want to. Yeah. And now you're already kind of clogging up your um, your daily pipeline that way. So um, that's good. That's yeah, so good. that attention. Master your mornings. I love it. Master your mornings. I love that. Four minutes, you guys. We're gonna get that information from Coach um, from Coach Arvin. And then I love how you said doing starting small but being consistent. So doing a little a lot. This is like doing this is. Lot. We're doing a part two with Coach, okay? I'm just let y'all yeah. know that. Um, that. This is so, so, so good. Um, and so, but is there now? How can people tap in? Like, what are your, what are your, you know, at whatever? Like, how do we find you? Do you have a website? How can we, or how can people, even the young men, maybe tap into the virtual coaching sessions that you do? As far as for mindset, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, I know you work a lot with, you know, young ladies. I mean, how can people tap into this? Because you got some really good stuff. That self study that you did. It's clearly working. I think it's going to change the game, the physical game of your clients and of your teams, mm -hmm. just by you 
incorporating this into what your strategy is. So that's like mm. amazing and powerful. Um, so how Thank can people you. find Coach Arvin? Yep. Uh, social media is Coach Mosley, J-R. So Coach and it's Mosley, M-O-S-L-E-Y and J-R. I think on Twitter, it's J-R with an underscore. Um, but ultimately, yeah, Coach Mosley, J-R, my website is www dot triple impact coaching dot org um you can find me there you can find me at the lineker team dot com um that's where i do my executive coaching and executive leadership um and then yeah i mean you, can, you know i don't know google me man right i guess they type me <laughs> in and look me i up. say that to my google me <laughs> I, that, I ain't that is hard to find what is, i ain't hard to find as they say right so but i mean um, you know the mrs globe network is international so there, i've seen people there's some okay. people from russia south africa watching oh, wow. and everything awesome. like that so you're it's i mean this has a, an international scope um they've been around for 25 years so it's a very big you know and a lot of people watch after the fact because in like russia it's yep, like yep nighttime right now um right, right, right. <laughs> so it, right. you know and so it's it, that's what happened so that's why i asked because you know they may not be able to just you know show up at a clinic or do something like that yeah. but they want to still be able to tap in to what you have to offer um so thank you thank you thank you thank you um i just this show was wow a lot of meat a lot of good stuff in here i will be rewatching it um yeah. definitely and then also getting some of that meat information so that when i repost the show i can kind of um, reference some of those things. Mm -hmm. So again, I just want to say thank you so much, Coach, for just taking your time this morning. Um, yeah. It sounds like your four minutes really did get you amped up for today. Yeah. And I'm going to be <laughs> implementing that effective tomorrow. That is yeah. so amazing. Um, <laughs> my Alicia in Canada, she said, I love it. Google me. Yes. I say that too. We were like, who? I'm not just Google me or at Real Talk yeah. to Haskins. That's what everything is. Um, so right. yes. And I mean, just powerful, good stuff. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, you guys, um, again, I may the fourth be with you. Next week on Choose You, we have the Wands, who is a Grammy, um, a Grammy Award winning rap artist who sang, I'm going to pop some tags, okay, on uh, Macklemore's uh, Surf Top. So I'm excited to have him next week. And we're going to hear how he's choosing himself. All right. So as I always say at the end of every show, that it is never too late to choose you, change your path, and walk in your purpose. Thank you guys for tuning in. Enjoy the rest of your Tuesday. Coach, I appreciate you. You guys, God bless.